If you're looking for one of the best new EVs on sale in America in 2023, look no further than the Kia EV6. Today I'm out in Las Vegas taking a look at the EV6 GT, but this video is not specifically about the GT model. This is about why I think the EV6 is the best new EV on sale in 2023 and why it is my best EV of the year. First up, there's the design. I think the EV6 looks fantastic. Now, I don't think it looks quite like a crossover. Kia wants to call this a crossover. I think this is really more of a sporty hatchback. It is fairly low to the ground with an especially low roof line. If you want more headroom, you are going to have to shop elsewhere. You could, of course, get the Hyundai Ioniq 5, which I think is a very close runner up for me for 2023. Starting this model year, the EV6 is going to be available in three basic formulas. We have the wind trim, that's the base model. It'll start out as a 310 mile rear wheel drive vehicle, or you can go all the way on up to this one, which is 576 horsepower and zero to 60 in 3.4 seconds. There's of course the GT line. If you want some of the design cues that you find on this model with a lower sticker price, and of course the longer range capability, you can get either 310 miles in the rear wheel drive one or about 250 miles in the all-wheel drive one. Let me know what you think about the look and how you think this compares to the Ionic 5 down there in the comment section. From this angle, the sporty hatchback styling is, I think, a bit more obvious. This is somewhere between hatchback and liftback. It does have a relatively horizontal hatchback here, but it's just not as upright as the average mainstream crossover, like a Kia Sportage would be. I'm really intrigued that the EV6 GT doesn't end up with some enormous boy racer wing back here. In fact, it has the exact same spoiler as we find in the GT line and the same sort of ducktail spoiler that we find in the GT line as well. In fact, all the way around, it's a little bit difficult to tell the two apart, except that we get some additional reflectors down there and some very light tweaks to the front bumper as well. At this point, I should apologize if you hear any jets rumbling in the distance. Unfortunately, at this EV6 GT drive event, it is really close to an Air Force base and they're practicing all around me. The pricing range of the EV6 is also really narrow, and that's an advantage. It starts at 48,005, so a little bit higher than I might like, but it tops out at $61,400, plus of course destination for this top end GT trim. That is much narrower than we find in the Ford Mustang Mach-E or the Tesla Model Y, the two most direct competitors to the EV6. And this charges faster than either of those options, thanks to its implementation of an 800 volt charging system. It uses the CCS charger right down here inside this tail lamp flap right there. If you have access to a 350 kilowatt DC fast charge station, you can go 10% to 80% in 18 minutes and 0% to 100% in 43 minutes. So this will go from zero to completely full in the time it would take a Mach-E to gain just 70% battery. That is a big, big deal. A Tesla Model Y is a little bit faster charging than the Mach-E, but this is still significantly faster. And thanks to the design of the battery architecture of the EV6, this will still charge really fast, even if you have access only to a 150 kilowatt station, because this will maintain 150 kilowatts for a really, really long time as it DC fast charges. That could mean for some folks that the shorter range that you find in some of these trims might be a non-issue because it charges so much faster. Kia also gives you a small vehicle to load functionality. You can offboard about two kilowatts of power from the rear. There's a pretty accommodating cargo area back here where I was able to fit about the same amount of cargo that you can fit in a Model Y or a Model 3. But as some of you have complained, under the hood, we don't find a front trunk. That's simply because the front is very, very short. You do, however, have a place to put your charge cables, and that's really the only thing I use my front trunk for. I think Kia's also done a really good job with the interior design. It looks modern, but it doesn't look too funky. We have this two screen setup in the dashboard that reminds me a lot of modern Mercedes models. Climate controls down here, and then a rotary shifter right here in the center. The steering wheel is fairly attractive in all models, and if you get the GT, we get this little lime green button over here to engage that driving mode. We also get a full color heads up display, which is a feature we don't find in too many mainstream EVs. You won't find that in the Mach-E or a Tesla Model Y. And then there's the performance. If you want to know more about this, check out my EV6 GT video. But in a nutshell, this model will go zero to 60 in 3.4 seconds at 100% state of charge. That is faster than a Mach-E GT at 100% state of charge or a GT performance in the Ford lineup. Ford's performance numbers in that Mach-E GT have frankly been a little bit disappointing. This is just a little tiny hair faster than the last Model Y we tested, but interestingly, a little more consistent even than the Tesla, and that is what I had not expected. This did 3.4 seconds at 100% state of charge, 90% state of charge, 70, 60, 
even 50% state of charge, this still went 0 to 60 in 3.4 seconds. That stretched out to 3.5 seconds at 40% state of charge, stayed there for 30% state of charge, and then dropped all the way down to 3.9 seconds, 0 to 60, at just 20% state of charge. So the EV6 GT is really, really quick, and it doesn't have those same performance limitations that you find in some EVs. I was shocked by that. That likely has to do with the 800 volt architecture and obviously battery and motor cooling as well. It could also be that Hyundai and Kia are perhaps a little bit more aggressive when it comes to battery lifetime than we find at a Ford, but we probably won't know for about 10 years and 100,000 miles or so. Perhaps more important for a lot of shoppers out there is the consistency of the performance curve in all versions of the EV6. Whether we're talking about the rear wheel drive model or the 320 horsepower all wheel drive model, Performance is very consistent from 100% state of charge all the way down there towards 10 and 15% state of charge. It does taper off a little bit right down there at the bottom, but performance is excellent. And you will notice it does not taper as much as most of the competition. So if you want an EV that drives just like it did when it was completely charged, regardless of that state of charge, you want to get one of these. And if you follow the manufacturer's charging guidelines and you don't charge your battery over 80%, in something like a Ford Mustang, you would only get 10% of your battery where you're getting complete performance and in this you're getting it for an awful lot longer without charging the battery any further all of that together makes this my top pick for evs in 2023 let me know what you think about that down there in the comment section what would your top pick be do you agree with me on this one or would it be your pick if kia could somehow build more and that is a problem here if you want an ev readily available in this sort of size category You'll pay a lot more for it, but the Tesla Model Y is going to be there, and that is definitely a top pick for me as well for 2023 because of its availability. They only built 20,000 of these last year. Hopefully in 2023, they will be building a lot more, but we don't know where their production capability limit really is. Demand has certainly outstripped supply. Let me know what you think about that. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so, and check out the related channels. I'll see all of you later.